Let's look at what happened with Tesla today and if it changes the patterns Tesla is in. So Tesla is up $5.88, 2.44%, closed at 246.38. Post market, we are up by 37 cents. This is a positive day for Tesla today. Let's just jump right into the one hour chart to understand in more detail how this day happened. Yesterday, we could not close above 240.89. This was our threshold. If we close back above 240.89, this is going to be above support. And if we were going to close below 240.89, which we did yesterday, this was our signal that things could be going down. The first hour today, the stock did something interesting. It started to go up and look like it was going to break on the first hour, 240.89, but then it came back down. If you entered at that point in time, this was still a valid short. It was still a valid short. It does not work all the time. It did not work in this particular instant, but this was a valid short because we had closed lower than 240.89 and we did not have stochastic over 60. And we had a bunch of our indicators that wish bearish between making a wrong decision or making the right decision that turns against us. If you entered after the first hour at 2.39, it was the right decision on the one hour chart to short Tesla. It was the right decision. But then at that point, you also needed to put a stop loss just a little bit higher. I would have chosen 2.42 and something just to give the stock a bit of leeway in case it came higher and came back down again. If you did that, you have a little bit of a loss, but it's not a critical loss. So what happened on the second hour is that we had the big, strong green candle and that made us break 240.89 and also that second support that we have on the one hour chart at 242.05. We cannot fight reality. We need to live with reality. Then on the third hour, we could not break 247. 247 and look at how precise this is 247 247 for the rest of the day we could not break 247 we could not break above it so uh, basically this is further confirmation that 247 is very important on the one hour chart on the daily chart it's less important because we don't need to go into that level of detail so again we can do the same thing right here if we break 247 on the daily chart and if we have stochastic over 60 at the same time, then this is going to be a buy signal on the one hour chart. So this is for those that want to play little swings in Tesla. If we go back on the daily chart, so in terms of the daily chart, as I said, we don't have a buy signal yet on the daily chart because we are still in a downward channel. This is a downward channel and we are going down and I don't advise anybody to buy into a downward channel because we could be reaching this side of the resistance and then come back down. If you want to try it, you can try it on the one hour chart because as soon as we break 247, then this is going to be de-risking that trade if you want to make it. But on the daily chart, this is a downward channel. We don't buy into a downward channel because if we buy into a downward channel, we are buying high and we could. And in 2022, we would have been buying high, 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 high. The trend is still down in terms of in terms of indicators. We have stochastic at uh, 26 MACD. We had the breakover bearish not too long ago. We have RSI below 50 and we have DMI also bearish. There is no bullish impulse yet on the daily chart. If you think that 240.89 is going to hold forever, then you can get back in. I'm not preventing you to buy. That's not my job. My job is to help you de-risk. Let's take a look at the VIX. The VIX came down 0.87, 4.78%, closed at 17.34. This is what made this slow turnaround. If we go on the one hour chart on the VIX, the first candle of the VIX right now is at three o'clock in the morning, our time here, Eastern time. At three o'clock in the morning, the VIX started to go a little bit higher and uh, right around the opening of the stock market, this is where the VIX started to go down and then Tesla has started to go up. After the first hour, we could see that the VIX was going to go down. This was putting a little bit more risk on a shorting Tesla. So uh, right now, VIX is down a little bit. It's still pretty high. It's still pretty high. Let's see what is going to happen tomorrow. 
but this had a positive impact today on the stock market as a whole. Let's take a look at some Tesla news. So Tesla embarrasses all automakers with these two charts. Okay, the first chart illustrates the US EV sales. No brand comes close to Tesla. Look at this. Tesla outsold the next 19 EV competitors combined during the first half of 2023. So they sold 325,000 cars. The second is GM at 34,000, then Ford at 26,000, Hyundai, Rivian, pretty good Rivian at 20,000 compared to Ford and Hyundai, then BMW, Mercedes, and blah, blah, blah. But this is really showing us that Tesla is really well ahead. So Tesla stock should be a lot higher than what it is right now, and it should not have come down that much in 2022. I completely agree with that. But what counts for us is we are buying shares at a certain price and selling them at another price. So we need to follow what the chart is telling us. So I may look like somebody that does not believe in Tesla. I believe in them, but I believe more in the chart. And also Tesla places three models in the US top 10 EV sales. It is namely the Model Y, Model 3, and then the Model X, the Model X right here after uh, Bolt, the ID4, and the Mustang. Yeah, the Mustang, we see a lot of Mustangs around here. That's interesting. Tesla has started delivering Cybertruck launch event apparel, hinting at imminent launch. So maybe this type of news is going to make the stock uh, go back up. We'll see what impact it is going to have. Also in my neck of the woods, we have North Vault that chooses Quebec for its next battery gigafactory, a giant 5 billion project. So North Voltade announced that it will establish a fully integrated lithium ion battery gigafactory just outside of Montreal in the Canadian province of Quebec. The factory named North Volt 6 will host 60 gigawatt hour of annual cell manufacturing capacity with adjacent facilities for cathode active material production and battery recycling enabling fully circular production at site. Great news for us in Quebec. Tesla is going into a critical trial today over a death that reportedly happened in an autopilot crash. The result of the trial could have an impact on the legal outcomes of other similar incidents. It revolves around an accident where Mika Lee's Tesla Model 3 veered off the highway near Los Angeles, crashed into a palm tree and caught on fire. Lee died and his two passengers were seriously injured. The passengers in Lee's estate are claiming that a defect in autopilot is responsible for the accident and that Tesla knew that there was a problem with its system making the automaker responsible for the accident. And Tesla is arguing that driver attention is the problem and also noted that Lee had alcohol in his blood, even though it was under the legal limit. This is not the best news, but people are dying in cars pretty much every day. This is sad, but it's still going to happen even with autopilots. And I think that Tesla has the data to show that there are less major injuries when autopilot is on. Okay, let's take a look at the U.S. bonds. So the bonds are coming down a little bit. They came up in the morning. This was the push down also that we felt with Tesla. The bonds at 8 o'clock were going higher and higher. And this is what pushed Tesla a little bit down. But then things started to reverse a little bit. Okay, Rivian, we have a break of our downward resistance. So this is a good news. We are no longer going down, but we just need to make sure that we are not going sideways. I am personally using 2359 as the horizontal resistance that we need to break. Of course, we have a top right here above 2359 on September 15th. So basically, if you want to be really sure, you can wait for 2462 because we have this little bit of a bump that was stopped by the sellers at that point. The sellers won that round. It's possible that we have a cave in at 24.62, even if we break 23.59. You do your own research and you make your own decisions. And Rivian is pretty much going sideways too. It's up three cents and that's not a lot. Xpeng has broken its downward resistance. 
that's pretty nice. So we are up 53 cents, 3.18%, close at 17.22. This one could be going sideways. To be really sure, I would wait for 19.22, but you can try it at 18.12 also because this is another resistance. So you can decide which one you want to choose. And things are starting to turn around a little bit. We have DMI that's uh, bullish. We have RSI at 50, so that's neutral. And, but we don't have stochastic yet. It's at 40. So I would wait at least for 1812 and 1922 if you uh, want to be a bit more sure. NEO, in a, a good day for uh, NEO, we are up 45 cents, 5.32%, closed at 891. We had a big drop, so now we are. Having a pullback, we don't have stochastic, everything else is bearish. So I am still going to qualify this a pullback. So we could have a pullback up to this downward resistance and we could have a pullback up to 10.21 also. So we'll see what happens. If we go higher than this, then most likely this is not a pullback. This is us coming back to the congestion zone that we're in. So that's nice in itself. You can get in above 10.21. But then at 11.31 right here, there is going to be a challenge. So it's fine. It's fine to catch a little bit of a swing right here. And it could cross it. Apple is stopping on its downward supports. 26 cents, 0.15% closed at 170.69. It is still in its downward channel. Everything else is pretty bearish. Arm is starting to climb up. Huh? So we had a little bit of stability here at 54, and now we want to go higher. This is the very tight channel that we have right now. When we have a tight channel, it won't last a long time, but it's still there. Okay, Palantir is starting to test the 16 bucks. So Palantir is up 92 cents. 6.2% closed at 15.77. Remember, we are into we are into a downward channel and we have been trying to get outside of it. It's been hard. We have been outside of it for two days in July. That's unfortunate. It only lasted two days. This is why you need to have a tight stop loss. And then here it has been outside for five, six, seven days. And then it came back in. What can we do? And right now, maybe we are going to try and test it again. We have stochastic over 60, so I would wait for a break of 16 bucks. I personally only wait for basically the first horizontal resistance. So I wait at the first horizontal resistance. So I am the type who will buy just above 16 and I'm going to check it like a hawk. I'm going to check it like a hawk. If it comes back down, boom, I'm just going to get out and get back in again. But if you want to be a little bit more sure, we see that we have a false start right here at 18 bucks. So of course you can wait for a break of 18 because we were squished at that price in the past. The stock market has a memory, so it's possible that we get squished again, but it's also possible that we continue. And conversely, there is also a big important support at 2045. We have resistance everywhere when we try to get back up. If you want to be even more sure, then you wait for 20. 45. And then if we break that, then we should be good. NVIDIA is bouncing on 406.62. Uh, we are outside of our downward channel and we are basically going sideways. We are up $6.21, 1.46%, close at 430.89. So we don't have stochastic over 60 yet and none of our technical indicators have turned. But as soon as we start breaking 440, this is going to be looking good. And of course, at 479.22 right here, this is going to be a little bit better. Let's look at our indices. So Dow Jones is up 0.35%. So hanging on tight just above 33638 so right here. So this should be green. Yeah. So we could be coming back into this downward resistance, downward channel. Everything else is pretty bearish. S&P 500 uh, basically going sideways, up 0.59%. All of the indicators are still bearish. NASDAQ Composite, we are up 0.83%. So this one is stabilizing also. So just above 13,013. So we see the buyers that are coming in. The buyers are coming in for now. Are they going to last? 
nobody knows. Physical gold is continuing its plunge. We are down 0.62%. We had some stability at 1461. We broke it yesterday. This is a good example right here. We broke that horizontal support. We had no stochastic. This was a, this was a short. And then this one is continuing. Silver, we are up 0.13%, just basically hovering above 761. We need to give it time to stabilize a little bit. Bitcoin, big move up, 2.65%. Uh, We've got stochastic over 60. So uh, yes, a break of 25.572 uh, would be a buy for me. XRP uh, up 1.75%. This is holding quite well. You could buy right now because it's starting to uh, rebound and making higher highs right here. We have made a higher high than what we had for the past four days. And also new battery material is rebounding nicely on the support. So the support is holding for a second day in a row. So we are up 2.78%. That's nice. And let's look at DNA uh, quickly. DNA, uh, it's giving in a little bit. So we have this important channel that we need to check and we are just right smack on it. So let's hope that we can really bounce on it. We had a nice impulse, but that impulse did not have stochastic over 60. So this is what happened. It did not really launch, but so maybe we need to be a little bit more patient with this one. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. If you like what I do, you can become a YouTube member. Click on my trading view affiliate link. I'm going to wish you a great evening. We are going to talk tomorrow and I'm going to tell you à la prochaine.